And Dr. Meme is here with a message saying, Hi, I saw an unsavory reply to your Star uh, Strider. Stride Assume at Star Wars meme, and I don't want to call them out, but I just want to know, as an LGBT, I really appreciate that you support and stand for us, and that meme was cute and fun. Uh, Dr. Meme, I absolutely support, you know, all... I, I don't know how to, how to say it, you know, inclusively, but, like, I just believe, unless someone is harming another individual, whoever it is you are to be in this world, be it, you know? That's all I can say. I can I will support anyone being who they authentically are. It, it it requires little explanation to me. Unfortunately, some people carry ideas that I don't know conceptual ideas in their mind of what other people are doing with their lives is a problem to them. It ain't a problem to me. And I actually saw the tweet and the interaction that you were talking about, and I've been umming and ahhing about talking about it. But I will talk about it right here. If that person is listening. I want them to just understand how they come across. I'm not going to tell them what they are, but it comes across as them being very antagonistic and looking for a problem. I saw that interaction, okay? The, the meme was, it's a trap, okay? In the Star Wars movie, there is this line, it's a trap from Admiral Akbar or whatever his name is, and I kind of look a little bit like him, and so this tweet went out of a meme that Wells made. has nothing to do with transsexuality, but this person seemed to look for a reason to say that it was and that it was hateful. And then when someone else interacted with them, purely asking why they thought that, that person then got some sort of negative response as well. Uh, to me, this this struck me as a person who was looking for a reason um, to to be upset about something. And it's up to them to, you know, think it over and wonder if that what they were doing or not. That's just my perspective on the matter. And yeah, I think there's too much of that in this world. I think there's too much of going out there and looking for a problem. We've got to give people the benefit of the doubt. We've got to be like, what's this saying? Uh, API, assume positive intent, especially when you're on the internet, okay? We're all communicating with text. Text eliminates facial expressions, tone of voice, all of these other things. And with those things, you can understand what someone is saying when they ask you a question. Are they going, oh, can you can you explain that to me, please? Or are they going, oh, can you explain it to me then? You know, there's there's very big differences there, right? Um, so we should assume the positive online, I believe. Because we are simply just communicating with one another. And we should give people the benefit of the doubt in those situations. Dr. Mean, thank you for bringing that up. Because I was um and an about it, and I think that came out the right way. I think I, I think I said what I had to say about that, and it was disappointing. I watched it on Twitter, and I thought, I'm not going to get involved here because if someone is, you know, having this sort of negative experience of assuming the worst, uh, if I try and interact with text, they are then probably, possibly, going to assume the worst of my interaction again. So uh, people out there on the internet, remember, the way we communicate with one another on the internet through text. It's it's missing elements that are very important to understanding one another. Which we could try and give people the benefit of the doubt, try and see eye, eye to eye, and assume people are more reasonable than not. And do you know what? When someone appears to be being rather unreasonable, you don't have to get involved as well, like I didn't. I chose not to get involved, and I think that was probably the right way to go about it.